Hey, what's up guys? So some of you may remember this liquid cooled build that I did in the Dan A4 SFX a few months ago. This configuration packs a serious punch when it comes to cooling potential for the space that it occupies. And I basically concluded this build saying that yes, it was definitely worth it for the improved cooling and overclocking headroom, but it was a serious pain in the butt. Fast forward to today and Acer Tech have redesigned that cooler specifically for the Dan A4, hopefully making these tiny AIO builds a bit easier and more more accessible. So today we're going to be looking at all of the changes that have been made, how thermal performance compares to the old model and larger coolers, and of course doing a quick build in the Dan A4. So enter the Acertec 645LT, a powerful 92mm liquid cooler that can sufficiently cool Ryzen 7 and Core i7 CPUs and the successor to the 545LC that was popularized in the Dan A4. So the pump block cover is a bit different, it now has a bit more character and looks a lot less OEM, definitely a welcome change. It's also using Acertec's Gen 6 pump which is their latest pump revision and is also quite recent. The 645LT is actually one of the only liquid coolers on the market to boast this pump aside from some other models from Corsair. There's also some sound dampening foam underneath the pump cover to reduce noise a bit further, so that's welcome as well. Another significant change is the tubing, which is now a lot longer than the previous models, and that should allow for a lot more flexibility and ease when it comes to installation. The mounting bracket also locks into the pump block now, which is what we've seen with some other Acer Tech coolers like the Kraken series. Again, just making the cooler feel a bit more premium and easier to use. The biggest change by far though is the fact that we now have rotatable 90 degree fittings on the radiator. Previously, they just exited out of the radiator, which did make cramming it into the Dan A4 a bit hard, seeing as it's mounted directly underneath the power supply. The height of the fittings is quite shallow, but it's just perfect to allow a slim 92 mm fan. The one I'm using here is the Noctua NF A9 by 14, which is near silent all the way up to its max 2200 RPM. So let's jump right into thermals now, starting with our Ryzen 7 2700X test bench running through a 20 minute render. So comparing the Acer Tech 645LT to the previous 545LC, we're seeing a 2.8 degree improvement in favor of the new 645LT. So nothing drastic. I wasn't expecting any large improvement here if I'm honest since the radiator is exactly the same. This is solely due to the new pump. The 645LT runs about four degrees warmer than a 120mm AIO, about 12 degrees warmer than a 240, and about 16 degrees warmer than a 280. Of course though, 240 and 280 mil liquid coolers do require larger cases to run in, so here it's essentially a trade-off between case size and CPU thermal performance. For the 645LT and 545LC to be able to handle Horizon 2700X at full speed in Blender really is excellent though, and the 645LT closing in on a 120 mil radiator performance is pretty impressive. Okay, so now let's squeeze this thing into the Dan A4. Now, if you remember the previous video that I did with this configuration, with the 545LC, you might remember me saying that it was one of the hardest PC builds that I've ever done. All up, it took me about an hour just to get everything mounted in there properly and put the side panels on. A lot of that was due to the tubing on the 545LC and thankfully that is no longer an issue with the new 645LT. The tubing can be routed quite freely, it doesn't bulge out of the case like it did before and there's no issue with compression. Thermals are also slightly better but nothing really worth noting. That's not to say that this configuration is easy though, it's still significantly harder than installing an AIO into the NK7 one Ghost S1 or Streetcom DA2, and the reason for that is that clearances are still extremely tight. Basically, the only thing that you have to worry about now though is routing that 24 pin motherboard cable, and due to it being quite stiff, you might have some issues with the side panel like I did. If I were to do this build properly as my main system, I'd definitely replace that stock 24 pin motherboard cable with wiring that's as thin as possible. So that's the Acertec 645LT, and I've got to say it's pretty cool to see high performance uh, cooling solutions, you know, make their way to small form factors and, you know, big companies like Acer Tech, you know, spending some, you know, research and development time and cotton money just to, you know, improve their coolers for this end of the market because it is a niche market, it is quite small, but it is becoming a lot more popular. A lot of people are downsizing their ATX rigs to something like, you know, a liquid cooled Dan A4, and it is quite easy to see why. I mean, when a system like this is, you know, Ryzen 7 and Core i7 capable, a lot of people are asking themselves, you know, do I really need a bigger gaming rig? Maybe not. Of course, there is nothing wrong with a large mid-tower case at all. 
Uh, they definitely have their place, but small form factor cases really are starting to catch up in terms of performance and optimization thanks to coolers like the 645 LT. If perhaps the Dan A4 is just a bit too small for you though, uh, you know, I can highly recommend the N case M1. That's what I'm personally using. That case can accommodate a 240mm AIO no problem at all. And I doubt the slightly larger volume of the N case will really bother most people if they're just going to use it as, you know, exclusively a desktop system like myself. The Dan A4 I see personally as just having some extra bonus points when it comes to portability and whatnot. If you do need that portability for whatever reason though, the Dan A4 would be my personal pick. Also, now that this cooler exists and it's more accessible, I'd love to see more cases eventually come to market that can utilize it, seeing as at the moment it's basically just the Dan A4. If you do have a Dan A4 SFX though and you haven't liquid cooled it yet, I mean, you should. So check out the links down in the description. Uh, there will be links to the AC Tech website. SFF Lab will have uh, stock in the coming months, I believe, and you can buy it from Overclockers UK. So Overclockers UK, I believe, will be getting their stock first. So feel free to check that uh, link down below. As always, guys, a huge thanks for watching. Consider subscribing down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you all in the next one.